Alrighty. <laughs> Hi, today we're doing redox, which is my favorite unit. Um, redox is also sometimes called electrochemistry. It's basically the chemistry of batteries. It's pretty cool. Um, so we're starting off with our introductory lesson. Um, our learning target, I can determine whether a species has been oxidized or reduced from the half reaction. I just want to make it clear. Um, some chemists will use the term species. Really what that means is um, an element or a compound. It's like a general term. So we are starting with a refresher. I always need to move this bubble, huh? Okay, um, here we go. Our refresher. So we know that an atom becomes an ion by either gaining or losing electrons. This goes all the way back to bonding. Um, if something is to become a cat ion, that means it's a positive ion and therefore it had to give away electrons. And an anion is a negative ion. And that had to take in extra electrons in order to be negative. So we have two processes, one for gaining and one for losing. So reduction is when you gain electrons. And I know that sounds weird. It doesn't quite make sense, but this is why it has its name. When something gains electrons, it becomes more negative and the charge or the oxidation state of that thing goes lower. So let's say I'm a fluorine atom. I have nine protons and nine electrons. If I gain an electron, my charge is now minus one. So my charge was reduced and went down and that's why it's called reduction. Oxidation is the opposite. Oxidation is when you lose electrons and that is becoming more positive. And lastly, an oxidation state or an oxidation number, there's a fancy chemistry definition for that, which is kind of um, like tracking electron loss and gain, blah, blah, blah. It's a fancy name for charge. Okay. That's all you need to know. So our job in a redox or a reduction oxidation reaction is usually to figure out who is gaining the electrons and who is losing them. So you can see here um, we have a magnesium atom. I know it's an atom because it's electrically neutral. Its charge is zero. It has 12 protons and it has 12 electrons. Now, if this magnesium wants to become a magnesium ion, it would be a plus two according to the periodic table because it's a member of group two. In order to do that, it has to give up two electrons. And that is where these two electrons come from here. That's magnesium giving them away. So the magnesium has lost electrons and therefore it is being oxidized or this little mini half reaction would be called oxidation. You with me? Okay, here we have an iron ion iron is plus three. And in this case, it is combining, it's squishing together with these three electrons. It's gaining those electrons. So this positive three and this negative three cancel out and we wind up with an iron with a zero charge, making it an iron atom. I believe that's 26. Yes. Right? 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. Yes. My periodic table is very tiny. Um, so iron would have 26 protons and 26 electrons, and therefore it's iron zero. Now, take a hot minute. Here we have aluminum with a plus three charge becoming aluminum zero. Take a guess. Oxidation, reduction. Is it gaining or is it losing? I feel like Dora. <laughs> so this right here, we have aluminum plus three becoming aluminum zero. In order to go from three to zero, remember we're working with electrons. So we would have to add in negatives. So this would be gaining electrons and therefore it would be reduction. Another way to know it's reduction is that the charge went from plus three to zero. The charge went down, it was reduced. So that's how you know that it's gaining electrons. And then here we have the opposite situation. We have copper zero becoming copper plus one. Copper zero has the same number of protons and electrons. And here, because it's positive, remember, in order for your life to become more positive, you have to kick out negatives. This means that copper lost electrons. It lost negatives in order to become positive. 
So that's how we get the situation here. Aluminum is gaining those electrons and copper is losing them because here the charge went down and over here the charge went up. Now, these things are called half reactions because, um, for instance, magnesium here can't just turn into magnesium plus two and send two electrons out into the universe. Doesn't work that way. These two electrons need to be accepted by some other atom. So because it's only showing half of the reaction, we literally call it a half reaction. Half reaction only shows what's happening to one species or one element or compound during a chemical reaction. Now, there are two ways to kind of keep all of this straight in your head. This is the one that I prefer. Leo says Gur. It makes me think of like a little lion. So when you lose electrons, that is called oxidation. That's Leo. Gur is, stands for gaining electrons is reduction. Over here, this is one that another group of people like an oil rig is like used to drill oil out of the ground. This oil stands for oxidation is loss and rig stands for reduction is gaining. So those are a few ways to keep it all straight in your head. That's literally it for our introductory lesson. It is trying to figure out who is being oxidized or who's losing electrons and who is being reduced or who is gaining electrons. We can do that from looking at a reaction that includes electrons written or we can do it without our electrons written. Now, Sometimes they're written with the electrons. Sometimes they're written without. Typically in half reaction, you would write the electrons, but you'll see later, um, you know, it takes two halves to make a whole. So we would see magnesium losing its electrons and then we'd see some other metal gaining them. So we would have, um, in one of the half reactions, the electrons would be a reactant and then the other one, it would be a product and they kind of cancel out. So in the full reaction, we usually don't show electrons, but in a half reaction, we will. That will make a little bit more sense in the half reactions lesson. So that's all I have for you for today. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. I'll do my best to get back to you. And that's all. Talk to you soon.